When we think of Star Wars at its best, we think of the jaw-dropping twists of old. We think of climactic finales, epic duels, and moments that bring us to tears. We see such things sprinkled into the franchise here and there, but nowadays Lucasfilm mostly banks on nostalgic cameos and everyone's favorite space cowboy to win over their audience. But Andor doesn't. Nor does it contain any duels or internet-breaking plot twists. There's no Jedi, no Sith, no lightsabers. All Andor has is man. A lot of man. And woman. Even manifestos. Because this is a show about mankind, about humanity, even more so than it is about Andor himself. Sure, the broader goal of this first season was to illustrate Cassian's recruitment into the larger rebellion, but it does this by showing us something more. It shows us why the rebellion has to exist, why it needs people like Cassian. Oftentimes when we look at Star Wars, we see weak, overconfident, and even flat out idiotic villains who end up serving more so as a nuisance than as a threat. As Endor makes sure to point out, this is often due to the complacency born from their prolonged iron grip on the galaxy. But not everyone can be like this, no. For every few hundred sheep, there's a wolf. Deidre Miro, defined not by the competence many at her station lack, but rather by the ambition to surpass them, shows us the lengths which people will truly go in order to consolidate power. From sly political maneuvering to the heartless torture of prisoners, the havoc Deidre can wreak on others illustrates just the kind of idealistic passion that wins the hearts of zealots. Cyril Karn, then, a young man with an admirable desire to pursue justice above all else, unwittingly serves the Empire's pursuit of the exact opposite. The blind loyalty he possesses for his cause, compounded by his obsessive desire to see his goals realized, makes him far more malleable than most. Such corrupting traits craft a regime's ideal soldier, their most vital defense against the ever-growing mob. Such civil obsession, though, can be seen on both sides of the playing field. Because Andor does not hold itself back with ethical boundaries drawn in sand, it understands that the world is far more gray than is black or white, and to depict this gloomy reality, it introduces the character of Luthen Rail. Matching the dedication of Deidre Mir while also surpassing her intellect, Luthen spotlights exactly how the Rebellion's sausage is made. Blackmail, abandonment, betrayal, these are the foundations for any realistic opposition to tyranny because they, above all else, serve the paramount goal of self-preservation. The rebels of Andor, at least those that survive Aldani, understand the necessity of such tactics. Even Mon Mothma, who thinks herself better than her bloodied peers, winds up dirtying her hands as well. Because as Andor soon shows us, with the help of legendary actor Andy Serix, the cost of falling up short to the Empire is high, and the drop from such heights is quite deadly indeed. Yet there are still people like Kina Loy willing to take that drop, knowing full well what grim fate awaits them below. As the season finale rolls around, setting up an epic confrontation between the show's major players, the bleak, repetitive nature of the Rebels' plight is more apparent than ever. But it's not this desperation that leads the people of Ferex to rise up, nor is it a thirst for revenge that finally brings Cassie into the table. It's the past. It's those fallen, idealistic fighters that were once considered too naive to be taken seriously. Their optimism, as seemingly misplaced as it may have been, is the key to overcoming such odds, to outlasting such evil. Because if the adventures of these characters have showed us anything, it's this. The Empire is unnatural. It is a disease. It is a crime against the natural order of life. The Rebellion has to exist because the Empire shouldn't and it desperately needs people like Cassian, who choose to risk everything for the sake of others rather than themselves, to remind it why it's fighting. Because someday, when the Luthans of the world put their own security above morality, the Rebellion will need someone to do what's right regardless of the cost. It's only after such a sacrifice that the Empire can finally be overwhelmed, and a new hope can, at long last, save the galaxy.